All right guys, welcome to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a couple things you guys can do to start flipping bikes. I know a couple of you guys already do it, and uh, if you guys already have your tricks and tips, then you don't, you don't have to watch. Um, but maybe you'll find something unique and new with what I'm about to share with you. So I started kind of flipping bikes, I think, I think I was like 17. I want to say 17. Makes sense, no sense at all. Um, I had my parents' truck at the time, but I would just pick up smaller things like mopeds and stuff because obviously I didn't have a ton of money. And um, yeah, I would just flip them and fix them up, do carb cleans and stuff, and flip them up, fix them, and uh, make a quick 100 bucks, 150 bucks here and there, and uh, everything was good. But uh, eventually, I get older and get my own truck and stuff and I start flipping a little bit bigger things and then it kind of grows exponentially from there. So like the bigger thing you flip, the more the more profit you get. So that's kind of uh, where I am right now. I don't really flip a whole lot anymore. Um, I do once in a while, but not really a whole lot. That's not my main source of income now, but it used to be quite a bit. So anyway, um, so getting into the video. If you're around 17 and, uh, or 18 and you're still in high school and you're looking for like a quick quick buck, um, I recommend doing this. This is like the easiest thing you can do um, if you know your way around the motor, uh, around the bike, around the quad. Pretty much all motors are the same. It's either four stroke, two stroke. Um, and I'll tell you guys the difference between the two coming up here and uh, what you guys can do to fix each one. So <clears throat> first thing you need is a way to get around so you're gonna need like a truck or um, what I used uh, was my parents um, it's was a, a, a Yukon Denali it was like a big SUV with a big trunk so I just would put every single bike I got in the trunk I would lay down some cardboard or like a piece of wood like that in the back of the trunk so no gas or oil would get on the carpet and I'd lay it down on the side and I would load, the, load up the truck like that and uh, yeah, away it would go. So I could only pick up one bike at a time, but that's all I could do when I was 17, 16, or 18 years old. Otherwise, you can get a hitch on your truck and get a stand like this. This is a motorcycle stand. Carries up to 500 pounds. Um, that goes right in the hitch, um, but sometimes your truck or your car doesn't have a hitch, so that can be a problem. Um, but yeah, find a car, your parents' car or anything, and obviously you're gonna have to pay for gas, so find out a way to get some income coming in. If you have money saved up, that's a good start. I would save up at least 500 right away um, if you wanna work with us, because sometimes you're gonna make mistakes and you're not gonna make a profit. Sometimes you're gonna break even, and uh, then you don't really make a profit and you waste that gas money. Um, so so th the first thing you're gonna do is get the vehicle. So you've got the vehicle, now you're going to look around on Craigslist, Facebook, um, places where you can buy bikes and uh, I figured out that the best place to look was Craigslist but basically what you want to do is scroll down to um, motorcycles and then go through all the different areas around you um, up to like about an hour and a half away you after that you're kind of getting into the gas range price where it's like too much so you're gonna be spending like 50 bucks in gas. You don't really want to do that um, unless you can make a profit of a ton. So um, starting out, you're gonna, like if you're 17, 18 with not a lot of money, you're gonna start doing mopeds. Mopeds are the easiest thing to do or little mini bikes like these. These are pretty easy, but you don't really find a lot. You find a ton of mopeds that people don't know how to work on. So pick up a moped, pick up one that's uh, worth around 500 bucks. You can pick them up for like 150 bucks. Uh, do the carb clean, they usually run pretty good, and also make sure it has a title. If it doesn't have a title, do not pick it up. Uh, they, do, they do not sell. I know that from experience. So <laughs> nobody wants a moped without a title. Doesn't make sense. So and nobody's gonna pay 250 bucks to go get a new title for that moped. Um, so anyway, find a moped for like 150 bucks um, with a title. It can be Chinese, Honda, whatever you want. Um, mopeds always sell for around 500 and nobody really wants to spend over a thousand for a moped. So um, find one for like 150 bucks, do the carb clean, post it for around four, 
four to five hundred dollars and make that quick quick profit. You should in the summer get it. You should sell it pretty quick within like two or three days. It would be gone. Um, don't get greedy with the prices because if you post one, if you get pick it up for 150 and you post it for let's say 800 bucks, and there's other mopeds up for five, nobody's gonna want to contact you about the 800 dollar moped. So you kind of have to play the game where you can't make a ton of profit, but you can make a little bit and then sell and quick quick flips is what I like to call them. Um, and then as you get more experience with motors, uh, two strokes are the easiest to work on as you'll come to figure out. It literally has, let's see, where's the two stroke? Okay, right here, good example. Got the DS80 here, uh, two stroke. You've got the head, the cylinder, and the piston in there. There is no cam chain, there's no valves, there's nothing. Um, you just have to worry about this section right here. Right here, that's pretty much it. Carb, cylinder, head, piston, that's it, pretty much. And obviously like the points and stuff if it's an older bike, but... So as long as it has compression, so to test compression easily if you don't have a compression tester, just kinda get a feel for it. Uh, 50cc obviously is gonna be easier to push down than a 250cc bike. So, but if it has something there, like a little resistance, you, you can see the resistance, it's got some compression, so it's gonna start. Um, check spark, you can take a spark plug puller with you when you go to buy a bike, and uh, they look like this if you're like brand new to the channel and you've never worked on a bike before, ever. Uh, it looks like that. Just a socket, take a wrench, put down the wrench, Take out the spark plug, which is right here. I know everyone pretty much knows this, but just in case you don't, um, I know some of my some of my viewers are um, younger people, and uh, they don't know this. But if you take out the spark plug um, right here, you can take it out, ground it to the motor, which is touching it to the motor head. It needs to be metal, and uh, put the spark plug cap back on the spark plug and then kick it over a couple times and see if it sparks on the metal. Um, the contact between the spark plug and the metal, it should spark. You'll see a, a, like a blue spark. Um, that means you have spark, obviously. Um, that's another good sign. So what you need, you need three things for the motor to work. Spark, compression, and um, fuel. So that's two of the three. The fuel is the easiest one. The carburetor, you can just clean the carburetor and then you're gonna get fuel. Um, gas tanks can usually be cleaned. Uh, Petcocks can be unplugged. Those are all easy things that don't cost money. So that's that's the easiest part. So two strokes are a little bit easier. Four strokes, you're coming over to here. Um, these are a little bit more tricky, especially like on dirt bikes, which the valves go bad pretty quick if you don't take care of them. And you never know because you're buying it from someone that you don't know and you don't know if they took care of them. So it's kind of like a big risk. But the valves are located underneath these little things right here, and the valves have specs, so there's a gauge feeler you can bring with you even if you really want to get crazy. Let's see if I've got one. There's a gauge feeler somewhere over here that you can um, test. It's like little pieces of thin metal, and uh, I don't know where mine is. I don't really work on four strokes too much, but mine's somewhere over there. Um, and it has different, I think it's, it's measured in like millimeters, so like there's tiny little thin pieces of metal, and you can shove them underneath the valves to test and see what the specs are supposed to be. And then you can change them and stuff. But if they're worn, then you have to replace them, and it's a big hassle. Um, but yeah, four strokes require the same thing, compression, air, um, or I mean fuel and air, and uh, the spark. So test the spark again, test compression again. Four strokes can kind of be deceiving though, because if the valves are locked up, you're gonna have a false compression reading. Well, you can bring a compression tester, but if you only have your hand, um, you can get a false compression reading if the valves are locked up. So always uh, just, you can kind of tell when they are locked up, but not everyone knows that. Okay, so you've got the motors. Two stroke, four stroke, the difference pretty much. It's not a huge difference, but I prefer to do two strokes just in case you run into bad compression and you have to re rebuild it. Four strokes are a lot more costly to rebuild than a two stroke, especially if you mess up that cylinder. 
then you have to replace all this crap in here. And next. Um, so what I typically do is look for a bike that is mostly complete um, or of value. Um, you're going to find out that bikes have certain values as you buy and sell more and you're going to find out what people want and what people desire. For example, I've got a Suzuki DS80, it looks like a piece of crap, right? I bought this thing for 175 bucks. But if you know anything about a DS80, you know that they're kind of rare. You can't find them. Kids like them, and parents like to buy them for their kids. So that's incentive for people to buy them right there. And it's cheap. I can sell this thing for 400 bucks and make a quick $225. So, I mean, it's easy. I picked this up on my way from Eau Claire. It was right in my way. I didn't do anything to it. It ran. I literally just picked it up. So that's like literally $225. I'm doing nothing, except I posted it on Facebook, which took about five seconds. So it's like free money, pretty much, especially when you know what you have. Um, the guy that sold it to me didn't really know what it was. He didn't know that brand name bikes hold a little bit more value than the Chinese knockoffs. So anyway, moving on, this Yamaha. Most people would say like, oh, it's a crappy piece of machinery. It's just kind of like a enduro. I mean, it's not nothing special. These bikes last year on eBay went for over four thousand dollars. This this model, nineteen seventy two, I believe, or nineteen seventy three. I think it's nineteen seventy three. Let me just double check. Um, which I picked up this bike for four hundred bucks. So I mean, it's you gotta know what people want and what the value of things are. I started out by looking on eBay and um, typing in the what the bike name is. And then that way you can kind of get like a reference point to see how much you're paying for and if it's worth buying them or not. Um, eBay is a good one, but they overprice things. So I always kind of like expect it to be way overpriced. And on eBay, a lot of people do like the restored bikes. So they're going to be way up there in price. Um, kind of cut that price right in half if we're going to do like a, a uh, non-restored bike. You'd sell it for like about half the restored and then um, you can check Natty Guy. Natty Guy is another good value uh, checking website or Kelly Blue Book is pretty accurate. I'll post an example right here of Kelly Blue Book. And an example of right here of Natty Guy. And uh, these websites, um, they tell you what a trade in value would be, which is um, like if you were to go to like a dealership that sells bikes, what you traded in for, what they would give you. Um, it's going to be really low compared to what the actual value is if you sold it as a private seller. I have your garage, like me. Um, always check the private seller listing. That's pretty much what it goes for. And kind of go a little bit lower than what they expect. Uh, just so you don't get your hopes up. And uh, yeah, so Kelly Blue Book and Natty Guy are my two. And then eBay. And then I always type into Google. I always go... Um, I type in the bike name and then I say for sale in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, where I live, or in surrounding areas, or you can go out of state or whatever, and just kind of see what they're going for. And uh, that gives you a good idea of what the value is. Um, another good tip would be to buy things that don't need a lot of work. For example, I typically wouldn't buy this bike right here, but it was a package deal. As you can see, look at the ripped seat. Um, it's kind of crappy looking, uh, missing some parts. If you want all these parts, these like the headlight and everything, this adds up to quite a bit. If you go buy new parts, you don't want that. You want it to be mostly complete, so you don't have to go out, buy these parts, and uh, you actually make a profit then. So for example, I'd have to buy a headlight, I'd have to buy the side panels, I'd have to buy the tail light, I'd have to buy a new seat cover. I mean, I'm not gonna do that, because I wouldn't make a profit. So I'm just gonna sell this bike for, I mean, up the price a little bit more than what I paid for it, and hope to get some profit instead of trying to make it look perfect and then selling it with, I wouldn't make a profit. I know for a fact it wouldn't. So um, yeah, that's kind of like my thinking. For example, the Quadzilla here, I picked this up. I didn't even know it ran actually when I picked it up, but the people seemed trustworthy. So I, and I was in a rush kind of, and I found it for 23 and um, what was it? I think it was Facebook I found it on. But the guy said you rebuilt the engine. Um, upgrade uh, suspension, 
and he said like really ripped good and everything. I went there, it didn't even turn out. It, I mean, I went there, I couldn't start it up. So I was like, whatever, I'll just take it. Um, it was up for three grand, by the way. And I offered him 23, he said, sure. And they got this beast and they got it home, pumped up the tires, uh, put some gas down the, the carburetor and sure enough, it fired up and it runs great. And this machine is worth around 3,000 now. So that's an easy $700. I didn't have to do anything to it. So that's kind of like where the flipping and stuff comes from is where you, you kind of have to know what you have in value and then um, price it to what you think that value is to that person. So a lot of older people will buy Yamahas and whatnot because they've had them in the past. For example, this bike, um, usually it's the older people around 60, 65, that range, 50 to 65, 70, um, who like these bikes uh, because they've had them when they were old or when they were younger. And um, yeah, so I've had a lot of buyers that come in through the garage that are around 50, 60, who always look at that bike and say, is it for sale? And I'm like, nope, not for sale. And then they like the RD350s, they like the vintage stuff. And a lot of you guys are like, oh, why do you guys always buy vintage crap? Why don't you guys ever buy anything new? Well, what I see is when I buy something new, I just see money thrown out the window pretty much. So I always buy something that I know I can sell for later more than what it's worth. So that's kind of what my thinking is on this whole thing. Um, for like example, the snowmobile, I bought that thing for 400. I know I could probably sell it for 500. I'm not gonna buy a brand new snowmobile for 6,000 to 8,000 dollars and use it a couple times and then have to sell it for four. That'd be a waste of time, it'd be a waste of money. It's just not worth it. So that's why I don't buy new stuff, by the way. Dirt bikes, for example, I go riding probably 15 times a year and I'm not gonna buy a brand new $6,000 to $8,000 bike when that one works perfectly fine. Buy it for a thousand bucks, haven't done anything to it except oil changes. And uh, it's always running, always working. And uh, it's always there. So that's my thinking on the process. Uh, hopefully you guys can wrap your head around that. That's pretty much why I don't buy anything new. Um, I guess I'm just a cheap person. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just, I feel like I'm smarter with my money if I don't buy anything brand new and I'm not gonna lose anything. Cause if that bike blew up and it was $8,000 and I'm gonna have to rebuild it and put more money into it, with these knowing that it's $1,000 and I can sell it for 22 to 25, I know that even if I have to put money into it, I'm still not too low. So anyway, this video is getting kind of long. So I'm gonna do a quick list of what you need. You need the truck. You need something to haul your, your bikes, quads, whatever you're gonna buy in. You need some straps. Um, invest in a good pair of straps, it doesn't really matter as long as it can hold like 500 pounds. Um, you're going to need to research a little bit, you're going to need some um, some time you're going to need, you're going to need some upfront money, like 500 bucks, that's all you really need. You're going to need to have, you can do it by yourself pretty easily, I've done it by myself. You're going to need like either a ramp or something to lift the bike into the truck. Um, for me, with, for example, I picked up that CR250. Um, with my dad's truck and he had like an SUV, the, the Yukon Denali. I had laid it right in the back of the trunk and the guy that was there helped me do it. Um, so there's always the other guy. So you always have two people. You've got the guy selling it and the guy buying it to help you put it in the truck. So um, you got the truck, the straps and um, time, money, and uh, you gotta do the research. Research is probably the biggest thing you need to do. Always get a Yamaha. Honda, Suzuki, all the name brand stuff go for quite a bit, especially if it's vintage. Um, dirt bikes always go for quite a bit. They always hold their value. The two strokes always hold their value. Um, but yeah, if you guys want any advice on what bikes to buy, always hit me up on Instagram. I post a lot on Instagram at two underscore vintage underscore. I can give you some tips and tricks because um, I've been doing this for quite a long time. I know everyone's different. Um, everyone has a different um, selling process and buying process and whatnot. And uh, I know everyone thinks they're doing it the best way. I know I'm not doing it the best way. I know I could do it better. I always pick up tricks and tips along the way that I use. Um, and YouTube has been helping me a lot with that because like, I know I should be doing the compression with the compression tester. I just never got around to buying a compression tester. I have one, but 
it was like a cheaper one, so it didn't really work that well. So I'm kind of doing the research on what compression tester to buy before I waste my money doing that. But um, the hand method, which I like to call it, uh, has worked pretty well for me in the past. And I mean, it can work well for you too. Um, but yeah, buy, buy a bike mostly complete, so you have to buy a bunch of parts. Especially, like, don't buy a bike with a motor without a carb or something like that, where you have to go find the carburetor for it, because eBay might not have it, then you're screwed, and then nobody's gonna buy the bike. Um, buy a bike with compression, buy a bike with a spark. If it doesn't have spark, just check the points, usually that's what it is. Um, usually the coils don't go out too, too much. Um, with this bike, my brother bought this for 200 260 bucks, it's an XT250 with a title. This bike will go for a thousand dollars and more. Uh, we got it running within a day. Um, the best bikes to buy, buy are something you just need to do a carb clean on. Literally takes an hour for this bike because it's hard to get out. And uh, if you can just let it soak for a while and whatnot, um, you just take out the jets, clean them out. And uh, YouTube has a ton of tutorials on how to do everything you need um, how to do spark plugs, how to ground the spark plug to get the spark. How to do the points, I do the, um, if you really need to do the, um, the, the valves and whatnot, you can look it all up on YouTube. It just takes some time. Um, you can clean out the carburetor. It tells you how to go over all of that. Tank cleaning, you can do vinegar. You can do the tank cleaning formulas they have at Fleet Farm and stuff. Uh, it tells you how to do all of that. Um, how to check tires, how to do all of that. Um, lights, electrical, you can do wiring diagrams, um, you can learn everything from YouTube um, and make quite a bit of money doing it. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. There's one last thing I did want to talk about um, today it was this company called, I forgot what it's called. Let's see, I always carry it in my truck because I use it all the time. It's just a super, super nice tool. And they actually reached out to me to do this because they saw my channel and they are like, oh, you, you work with motorcycles and cars and stuff a lot. So, Audu, it's called. So this thing is super cool. Let's open it up here. It's pretty much like the best thing ever. It's a complete lifesaver. I'll explain it right here and I'll leave the link below for it. So it's called Audu, the company's Audu. It sent, they're around, right off the bat, I think they're like 50 bucks. You will use this every day of your life, pretty much. I carry it like my cell phone, pretty much, everywhere I go. Um, it is, so what you use it for is when your car dies, your battery dies, and you're stranded without anyone there, this thing can jump your car for you, you can charge your battery, it can charge your phone, it can charge your drone, you can charge your GoPro, you can do anything with this thing. Um, it's got a flashlight, it's got a flasher, it's got the, um, it's got all these outlets on it. I've never used that one before, but you can charge it up from your car. Um, it's just like a phone pretty much. And uh, you can jump your car with it, which is sweet. You can do 30 jumps with it. Uh, it's 12 volts, so it works for cars, it works for motorcycles. Um, I know everyone's been in a situation where your car, your car battery dies and you're sitting there with jumper cables, but you don't have someone with you. And this thing is perfect because you literally just take it out of your backpack. It comes in this like nice little carrying case, which is like the size of like a purse. It's very small. And uh, you just place it in the back of your car, grab it out. Okay, so what you do is you plug this into the side here. Make sure this thing's charged though. Um, turn that on too. Put this in here, put it on negative, positive side. Don't start your car yet either, and then hit that boost mode when these are on the battery, and this is on, hit the boost mode, and it will take off 30 seconds. Go back to your car, turn the key, and this thing will crank it. So you can crank your car continuously that 30 seconds until it starts up. So super cool, super useful, used it a bunch. My girlfriend actually, she, uh, um, you know, Claire, her car died, because it's, I don't know why her car's been dying lately. But we didn't have anyone around, it was late, and uh, I have jumper cables in my truck too, but we didn't have my truck there at the time. So I grabbed this out from my backpack that I was carrying with me, and jumped it first try, boom, done. It was just done with, so that was really nice. Also, I always use this for my phone charging. Uh, 
and I do a lot of like drone footage and GoPro stuff. So I just plug in multiple things right into here. These two ports right there. Also, handy dandy little flashlight. I use it sometimes when I'm like checking oil and stuff if it's dark out. Look at that. <clears throat> flashlight, super bright. Then it's got the flasher. So if you're stuck out in your car and uh, you're on the side of the road or something and you need help, which you shouldn't because now you've got the jumper cable, but if you've got like a tire change or something, you can just hold that out to a car if your car is dead or something and uh, you can do that. Um, also comes with the slow one. And uh, yeah, so pretty much you just need it on. You can plug in your charging stuff. You can charge it through right here and then you can do the jumper cables to right here which it comes with, it comes with this whole set, it comes with the charger, the jumper cables, and this battery pack. And uh, this battery's lasted a long time. You can look up all the reviews on it, it's, gonna, it's got great reviews. Everyone uses it, they come up with, you can make bigger battery packs and stuff, and it's all in the link in the description. So definitely check them out, it's been a useful thing that I use every day. Um, it pretty much like replaced my cell phone for certain things. But anyway, there's a 20% discount if you use my code um, below. Um, and I'll leave that right here so you guys can get this code and use it. Make sure you click the link in the description to use it, otherwise I don't think it will work. So to get the 20% off, the I think it's like $59 or $50, I think it was, or $49, to get the 20% off of that, um, which 20% of the $50 is 10 bucks off, which is pretty dang good. So if you want to get, if you guys want to do that, It'll help my channel, I guess, too. So, um, yeah, go buy one. It's a good, great uh, Christmas present, birthday present for your dad or your mom. Um, or you, if you uh, are into motorcycles and stuff and you need to jump your motorcycle, which I've had to do multiple times, or you need to jump a truck, it's perfect for that. So definitely go check them out. Um, check the link in the description. And uh, let me know if you guys buy one. I'm curious to see it. And it will change your life forever. I wouldn't promote it if I didn't believe in it. So, yeah, definitely go check it out. It'll help me and my channel. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for subscribing. Um, and yeah, it should. I'll do a quick ride in this thing, too, to add to the video. All right, guys, so sorry for the long video. And if you were bored with that, now we're going to do a quick riding video, just in case you guys were super bored with the long talk about how to make money, which I don't know why you guys would be bored. But uh, anyway, we picked up this XT 250 for 260 bucks. Um, near Milwaukee, somewhere over there. And uh, this thing is in 1981. It's got 2,246 miles on it, and uh, everything works on it. Blinkers work, because I hooked up a charger to the battery, that worked. Um, everything works, gas tank is completely rust free. Not a single speck in there of rust, crazy. Um, carburetor I had to clean, and uh, Blinkers right here are broken off. I painted this little um, exhaust pipe coming out of it, and everything else is good. Starts up within like three kicks. Uh, throttle cable works, everything works. Suspension's pretty good, tires are pretty good, and uh, yeah. So I posted this bike up for, I think, 1300 bucks, and some guy tomorrow is coming to pick it up for like $1,000. So it was a quick flip. Um, that's what you can make when you. Uh, you're flipping bikes if you know what you're doing um, and hopefully my tips and tricks kind of helped you guys and if you guys want to know anything else remember to go to my instagram and always message me i pretty much respond to every message i get so if you need help if you need recommendations anything um hit me up on instagram at two underscore vintage underscore and i'll get you guys all set up and stuff also if you guys want to ride or anything hit me up on instagram um, if you guys want shout outs, if I like your channel, I'll shout you out. I don't, don't care about doing that. Um, I'm trying to help other people help themselves. So if you guys want a shout out or anything like that, I'm down to helping. I'm down to riding with you guys. I'm down to helping other channels um, succeed because I know where, where I was at one point, which was zero subscribers. And I know how hard it is to get to that 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 mark and then start growing. So if you guys need a shout out, um, I will do it for you, but I want you guys, you guys to like put effort into your videos and actually try and be consistent with them. I'm not gonna shout you out if you have one video on your channel. So 
make sure to have a successful channel already going and then asking for a shout out ask me to review a couple of your videos and uh, I'll see what I think and then shout you out on my Instagram and maybe YouTube too so just to help you guys out because I know how hard it is and uh, yeah so I'm a pretty nice guy I think I'd like to think so I'm just trying to help people out I know I get a lot of hate for like not knowing certain things in the comment section but I'm still learning too I'm still kind of young so I don't know everything I don't ride the fastest and I a pro uh, I'm just trying to help other people um, succeed and make a little money doing bikes and stuff and hopefully I do that. But anyway, let's take a ride in this thing. I'm gonna switch to GoPro and we're gonna take a quick ride. So stay tuned, switching to GoPro right now. All right guys, we're gonna be taking a look at this Yamaha today. Taking a quick test drive in this bad boy. Um, this bike is super cool and uh, we're just gonna take it for a test drive, I guess. Um, let's see here. Let's start this bad boy up. Okay. So, what you do, turn the key to on. Check for gas here before we run out. Got a little bit left, not a whole lot. So hopefully we can get through the video. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more in. Because that is not a lot at all. I got a little bit left in here. Fill up the rest of it. Don't want to get stranded and have to walk it back. I've been there, done that. Multiple times. Just put enough in so I don't get stranded. We're just going to take a short ride, get the fuel for the bike, um, and see what happens. So this bike typically takes two to three kicks to start up, and then you let it warm up for a bit, then you're good to go, turn it on, there's an off and run, you want it to run, turn the key on, you can adjust your mirror if you want, give it a good, give it a good kick, this thing, has, uh, which is really nice, has decompression release. So as you're kicking it, it automatically, as you can see that lever, lets the compression out and makes it easier to kick. Super cool. Well, started up first kick. So really can't complain about that. As you can see, the lights on the speedometer dash work. We've got 200, or 2,246 miles. Blinker doesn't work and horn doesn't work, which is I think the battery, the dead battery would cause that. Headlight, headlight works great, high and low beam work. So we're going to take a cut and then I'll let this warm up for a bit and then we'll go. So cutting right now. Alright, it's warmed up, let's give it a go. Shift it down into first. Alright. So, one goofy thing about this thing, which I think is maybe the cable is sticking, is that the clutch takes a while to engage. Watch when I shift in a second. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, it's good now. Woo! Speedometer doesn't work. But everything right now feels really solid. Um, motor shifts very smoothly. Motor sounds decent. There's a little bit of a knock, but I don't think that's anything too crazy. It's a four stroke. We're gonna have a little knocking here and there. Good pop, good pickup. Shift in the second, away we go. Third. Fourth. Does it have one more? I think it did, yeah. Well, super cool. Super duper cool. This thing is super fun. Um, what I noticed about it right away was that it was super light. I don't know if it's just this model that's super light, but it seems extremely light. Um, I'm guessing around 200 
350 pounds, somewhere around there, maybe 300, uh, which is pretty light for an enduro. Very good pickup, very fast for what it is, 250. I'm guessing it goes around 80. Um, su handles super well, like I can move this thing anywhere. Suspension, great. Like super easy to ride. So if you're a beginner, this is a great bike. Pretty low to the ground, easy to kick over, so you don't get that back fire. Um, but yeah, super solid bike. I'm actually selling this thing for a thousand dollars tomorrow, so making a quick profit of 640 bucks, which isn't too bad. I know a lot of people get mad about that, but you got to be there at the right place at the right time, and it takes a lot of patience to get something up and running like this. So anyway, that's the review of the bike. Runs good, pretty solid little bike, can't complain. Um, super cool, 1981 the Yamaha XC250. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I was using the GoPro Hero 5 Black. Um, this GoPro, I picked up this GoPro because the, it works with the external microphone. I actually decided to go with this one instead of the GoPro Hero white or silver because they actually don't work with um, the microphones that you can't have an external microphone on the white or silver version and I didn't really want to spend 500 bucks on the black the 7 black so so I decided to come down a couple versions and go with the GoPro Hero 5 black and it seems to be going pretty well so if you guys <clears throat> need to buy a new GoPro, I'd suggest going with like the 5 black or the 6 black instead of like the 7 black, even though the 7 black has very good stabilization. Um, this one has pretty good ones, so. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you guys want any tips or tricks, follow my Instagram at 2 underscore vintage underscore. And uh, if you guys want Charlie to upload more, uh, go comment on his videos. His video, or his uh, YouTube is called two vintage two as in t-o-o -O, uh and i uh, give him some motivation to upload more i know he hasn't really been uploading and uh i know everyone loves to see him in the videos and stuff so give him some motivation to do that also his instagram is chuck.weber14 if you want to go check that out leave a nice comment to him and uh um, tell him to come back but anyway thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing if you guys want that uh battery pack charger um for the truck Go in the link below that is listed below with my pin and my code that you can get the 20% off. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, we are out. <laughs>